Hey everyone, this is a video looking at low light, high ISO performance, and we're going to be looking at the DF versus the D5 versus the Nikon Z6 to see which one performs better. So when it comes to the kind of king of low light photography, the D5 has held that crown for quite a while. You have a full frame 20 million pixel sensor that has the ability to go up to 102,000 ISO natively and then 3 million ISO when using the expanded ISOs. We then have the DF, which a lot of people have seen as Nikon's best low light camera for quite a while. You have a 16 megapixel sensor, full frame again, High ISO this time natively of only 12,800. You can extend that to high one, two, three, and four. And then we have the new kid on the block, so to speak. We have the Nikon Z6. We have a 24 million pixel. So this has the highest megapixel count of all three, which could work as a disadvantage. But it is full frame and it is backside illuminated. So this is a 24 million pixel BSI sensor. So we're gonna see how well this stacks up against the kind of low light performance of the D5 and the DF. This is just a view of just ISO picture quality. Obviously in certain situations the D5 will be better, faster frames per second, full body grip, that type of stuff. In certain situations you might prefer to shoot with the DF and in others you might prefer to use the Z6. The Z6 absolutely destroys both of them for video, even the, especially the DF because the DF can't record video at all. So what I'd like to do is we're going to head over to my Mac. We're going to compare images at different ISO performances. Just before we get into this, I just want to stress that obviously ISO and noise and grain is a personal preference. So I want you to see this video as just information. I'm just showing you what the cameras give you. And anything that I talk about, it would be my personal preference and what I prefer to have my noise in my images to look like you might be there sitting there going, well, I don't agree with this. And that's fine because you might have a different taste to what you want your noise to look like in your camera. But I'm just showing you side-by-side -side comparisons between different cameras. Okay, so this is where I want to start. What we have, first of all, is the three pictures lined up. The first one here is taken on the Nikon DF, and it's with the 58mm f1.4 at stop down to f8. We will then have the Nikon Z6, and this is with the Z 50mm 1.8, stop down to f8. And then we'll have the D5, also using the 58mm, stop down to f8 as well. What I wanted to try and do is try and get the lenses that were close to each other as possible, um, using native lenses as well, to try and kind of take away any kind of sharpness issues caused by optics or anything like that. I just want this to be about ISO and grain and noise performance. So what we're going to look at first is ISO 3200. So first of all, we have the DF at ISO 3200, and we're going to crop in at 2 to 1. So we'll go straight in at 2 to 1. And at 3200, the main subject area point of focus is nice and clean but when we start to look at some of the shadow areas down here and some of the depth of field areas up here we start to notice a bit of grain but nothing too distracting and nothing that we couldn't go and remove from editing the raw file in Lightroom either. So DF at 3200 ISO, Z6 at 300 to 3200 ISO, it does appear cleaner. There is still a bit of grain in the depth of field areas, but it does appear like it's a cleaner file 
and we can see the extra detail because of the higher megapixels. So DF Z6, DF Z6, DF Z6. I'm going to say the Z6 has definitely beaten the DF at this point, so let's compare the D5. So what we have first of all here is the D5 and then the Z6. So D5, again bit of grain in the background but nothing too major. Z6, D5, Z6. The Z6's extra megapixels do shine through in the detail, so let's have a look down in this corner. So D5, Z6, D5, Z6. I think it's probably a bit too close to call. I think this is going to be down to personal preference between these two. Maybe the D5 slightly cleaner here, but the Z6 does look sharper. Could be because of the more megapixels, but we'll see how this progresses as we go into higher ISOs. Okay, so here we are at 6400 ISO, and first of all the DF, so we're in at 200% again on the DF shot, and we can start to see there's, there's a lot more grain from 6400s upwards with the DF. So we have DF, Z6, and the Z6 does look much cleaner, especially in the main focus area foreground here. Still a bit of noise in the background, as you would expect at 6400, but does look much cleaner than the DF does. So DF, Z6, and then D5. Now, the D5 appears to have a bit more visible grain up in this area here, but it's quite clear that the Z6 and the D5 are starting to leave the DF behind now. Let's have a quick look down on the FX logo down at the bottom of the frame here. So we have D5, Z6, DF. And again, DF is the worst here for noise performance. So between the Z6 and the D5, Z6, D5. And again, I think the Z6 is, is still retaining that, that bit more detail and sharpness. Noise level and grain seem to be similar. If, definitely if we look at this FX logo here, it just seems to be a bit soft. But yeah, D5 and Z6 still neck and neck, nothing really to separate them just yet. Maybe a couple of percent towards the Z6 maybe at 6400 ISO. So Z6, D5, but they're so close. Okay, so here we are at 12,800 ISO. Now, just to keep in mind, this is the top of the native ISO range of the DF. So this is kind of the higher limit of a DF's ISO performance. So 12,800, we'll go in. This is a DF, first of all. And as we'd expect, as it's getting to its higher limits of ISO, there's a lot of visible grain. But it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So comparing that to the Z6, the Z6 does look much cleaner. Still a bit of grain here at 12,800 in the depth of field out of focus areas. But the main foreground area looks really clean. A bit over here, but nothing too major. And then D5. D5 still just looks as clean again. So let's have a look down in the corner. So this is DF, Z6, D5. It's really starting to get difficult to separate the Z6 and the D5. So Z6, D5. So we have the Z6 on the right hand side here and the D5 on the left hand side. I'm probably going to give this to the Z6 but again this is just my personal view of what I think is better right in front of me here. I'm probably going to go with the Z6 being the best noise performance at 12,800. The DF has clearly been beaten by both of them. Okay so here we are at 25,000 ISO. Okay so the DF at 25,000 ISO is into its high ISO or high one and when you use these expanded ISOs generally the noise performance gets significantly worse. So let's take a look. So here's the DF at 25,000 ISO and as we would predict there's a lot of noise in this shot in the defocus areas but also in the foreground as well. So we'll compare that to the Z6. Z6 looks much cleaner getting a bit of color noise in the Z6 actually across the top and into the background 
but the foreground definitely looks much cleaner. And compared to the D5, D5 looks like it has more noise, but not necessarily any color noise. It's all kind of like a flat gray. So D5, Z6, D5, Z6, DF. So DF, Z6, D5. So let's have a look down here in the corner. D5, Z6, DF. So again, it's between the Z6 and the D5. So we have the Z6 on the right hand side over here and the D5 on the left hand side. And this is at 25,000 ISO. I'm unsure, I can't really call this. There's nothing nearly that I can see that's separating these. Maybe a tiny bit more detail and sharpness in the Z6 with slightly less noise, but it's hard to call. Hard to, I never thought it was going to be this close. I, I, I knew that the Z6 was good in low light, but I didn't know it was going to be this close to the D5 to call it. If I had to choose one, I feel like because of the extra detail in the Z6, when I do do the noise reduction, it still have more detail afterwards. Whereas when I do noise reduction on the D5, I might start to lose some of that detail because of the less megapixels. If we look at the sharpness of the FX logo here, the Z6 does have a lot more detail in than the D5 does. So when I do noise reduction, I retain more of this than when I would with the D5. Okay, so this is 51,000 ISO, and the DF is really being pushed now. It's at high three, so it's three stops above its native ISO, and this really starts to show in the detail of the image. You can see that we're getting a lot of color noise in here now. It's losing a lot of its detail. Image is really starting to break down at 51,000. The DF has put in a valiant effort. It's done pretty well at the lower ISOs. It kept up. I think the DF has gone as far as it can go. DF at 51,000 ISO. So Z6 at 51,000 ISO. It does have a lot of noise in it, but retaining good amounts of detail at 51,000 not too distracting. This is D5 at 51,000 ISO. It's hard to choose between the two. It's hard to separate them again. So let's have a look. So on the left here, we have the D5. And on the right, we have the Z6. I, I can't actually pick one here. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm thinking maybe the D5 at 51,000. Could be to do with some of the color patterns that we have in here. And D5 just seems to still have no color noise ne ne whatsoever. But it's still quite close. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Z6 on the right is getting a bit of color noise in here. But still has more detail because of the high megapixels. Right, so final one, 102,000 ISO. The DF is at its complete maximum now. We are at high four, and even without zooming in, we can tell there's a lot of grain and noise in this image. So the DF is at high four, its maximum ISO, 102,000. And we crop into two to one, and full of color noise and lots of noise in there, quite a lot of lot, loss of detail as we would have imagined. The Z6 is now into high one, so it's gone past its native ISOs and it's now into expanded ISOs. The D5 is the only one that's still within its native range, so the D5 can natively go to 102,000 ISO. So this should be interesting. We have native ISO on the D5 versus expanded ISO on the Z6. So D5, noise, a lot of noises we would expect, but well controlled, there's not a lot of color noise, bit of blotching maybe down here compared to the Z6. Well, the Z6 has a lot more color noise in there. There's a lot of blotching to the noise with different colors. I definitely think that the, the D5 is gonna take this one purely because the Z6 has gone into its expanded ISOs. So D5, Z6, Z6 over here on the right, and D5 over here on the left. Let me know what you think in the comments, but I really, really do think that the Z6 has done exceptionally well, right up to 51,000 ISO. And then right at the last post at the 102,000 ISO, the D5's beaten it 
purely because the D5 has that ISO natively, whereas the Z6 can only do that using the expanded high ISOs. But let me know what you think in the comments if you preferred one or the other. Um, I was, I'm incredibly impressed with how well the Z6 worked up until 51,000 ISO. So yeah, up and if we're talking about ISO from 100 to 51,000, the Z6 to me looks just as good as a D5. And it's only when you then go above 51,000 ISO that the D5 starts to push ahead. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and gave you some insight into which cameras work particularly well in low light and why that might be. Please do like and subscribe to my channel. We're going to have plenty of Nikon videos going forward, more stuff like this and then some stuff that you haven't seen yet. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon.